Hey everybody, welcome back. We have a lot of ground to cover. We're going to jump into it. Here is our neckline on the ES. We can see that going straight across. Let's just drop a line there to start. You can see where we're battling that, trying to get through, pulls back, finally gets through. It's really closer to that 80 level, 4380 that we've been having an issue with. And it looks like we're finally making some progress on that. You can see how we are finally getting over there. Your wicks are all in here and any other day you would be very comfortable with this position, at least feeling better about yourself. But we have some issues obviously with what's going on in the war. We're going to address that today, but this is a really critical level. So now we're at this 4378. I'm going to call it 4380 level. You can see this wick standing right. We're going to address that in a second. You have to get to the top of this control bar. That's obviously going to be a big issue for us. And you're going into a huge week of economic data that we're going to address. But first, let's just talk about the day. Now, the day started simple enough. We'll just drop our, our neckline right coming across. You can see how we lifted around that 10 o'clock area, which is what we like to see. But off that open, you can just kind of see right here how we were fighting that open, started getting a bunch of wicks from there. And then we just started taking off. You have the little pullback in the middle of the day. Well, the beginning of the middle of the day, I should say, about an hour in. And then we just start lifting. And then we're having a little bit of trouble with 44, 44, 10, 44, 15. And that's okay. That's not the end of the world. But then at the same time, we have Biden speaking, confirming that 14 Americans were killed or captured was the way that it was said. Uh, and that didn't go over very well. And at the same time, you have Hezbollah coming out and saying that they are going to attack uh, Israeli or have attacked Israeli tanks. That didn't go over very well. Now, a couple of things we need to take away from this event bar. Number one, once this happened, that was it. We never came back from this level. And there's a real important distinction here. And drop this down for a second. If you come straight across with our level, you never got above that level. So we never got above there. We were there the entire time. And that's a little bit of an issue. So that means that the initial selling of this bar, we just hung and we just stayed there. And I think that that's going to be an issue for us. So what I would like to do and what I think makes the most sense is to drop a line there and just watch that tomorrow. So in other words, 4,400 seems to be an issue. We have PPI coming out. Everybody's aware that PPI is coming out before CPI tomorrow. It will be closely watched. It comes out at 8.30. It will move the market. We are very sensitive to interest rates, but there's something going on there that we're going to talk about as well. I can help a couple different sectors that people have not really been paying attention to. We're going to get into that. But we must watch this level tomorrow. The other thing that we must watch is we must watch the top of that bar. We have to see how we're going to act at the top of that bar, that 4415. Are we going to act well? Are we not going to act well? Both of those are key levels now, and they're key levels for a couple reasons. And we should address this. This is a key level now for the obvious reason of this is where we broke down. Both of those statements, it's interesting they released them both at the same time, but both of that, those statements affected the market. And the one thing that everybody's afraid of more than anything is escalation. So escalation is going to lead to the market drop. Now, if you listen to investment banks, the majority of them are saying everything is contained. I think that's a little delusional to make that kind of decision so early, but we'll see what happens. I also don't like how they're playing the games here. Now, one of the key things that I like to do when you have an event bar and we do this in the morning at 8.30, but you can also do it in the middle of the day. It doesn't matter. Really quick tip for everybody, drop an anchored V on the news event, and then you can just see where all the players are for the whole day and how they're acting to that news event. We were unable to get over that level, but they kept giving you the flim flam. And then up here, it looked like they were going to rally. I was actually able to scalp a couple things into here. But what this did was, once you see these kinds of games, you kind of know you're on the other side, meaning that they're probably going to bring it down. But then then this was really kind of fascinating. They never broke it. So they broke you down, made you think they were going to, got back to the rejection, but they never really broke it. And I think that's something that I really want to watch tomorrow as well. I don't know that I really have to pay attention to 4391 as much as I want to pay attention to these as resistance points, but just the mere fact that we were not able to actually crack the market here, I think that says something. So I'd like to see how this plays out, but Overall, it was a really good day. It was a great trading day for people that are for traders and a couple of things that we should really address here. But I do want to focus on this for a second and say, okay, so what, what do we do now? Well, if we just look at the lay of the land, you are above the 12, I use a 12, a 22, and a 55. I think there's a couple core things that happened today. Number one, the 12 is now pointing up for the first time in well over a month. 
So within a month now, we're finally starting to point up on the 12. The 22, we have rejection, complete Matumbo right there. And I don't like this bar. I don't like being 50% down on a bar. And we have the 55 right here. So you're in an area right here that is a complete rejection area that we have to pay attention to. And at the same time, the RSI is at 50. So if we were going to work off an oversold condition and then reject, this is pretty much where it happens. This is where, as you know how I look at these lines, is demarcations. The 22 is where the bulls and bears determine who's in charge. And since we started mid-September, it has been the bears. Now, we're trying to flip that here. We have the RSI clearly showing that we've worked off that overbought or oversold condition, rather, and we're just not going. So we have to look at this. We can make excuses as to why this happened, but nonetheless, it happened. If we take a look at this with the NASDAQ, let me clear off my thousand lines and let's just review. I think that this is significant. And what I want to focus on more than anything is just the RSI and the fact that the R is over 50 for the first time in a month. Since we broke, the last time you flipped over the 50 was back in August, and we haven't done it. It just happened today. And I think that's a really important distinction. Now, PPI, CPI could absolutely kibosh that, but I don't know that that's going to happen. So all I can do is trade what I have right now. I can't trade what's going to happen. No one has a crystal ball. But look at the 12. 12 is pointing up. We're above the 22. Who's in charge when you're above the 22? Bulls are in charge. We made a higher high. And now we're testing that 55 in here. So this is a very different looking chart when you start looking at these moving averages versus what you're looking at when we look at the ES, which are pointing down. The NASDAQ, which usually leads the market, now you always want the NASDAQ to outperform because that's usually where the growth comes from and that usually leads the charge. This looks significantly better than what we see going on with the S and obviously we have here as well. So what does that mean for us? Well, we're gonna wanna watch these levels and we should probably just drill into this on an hourly for a second, clear all that off, and just take a look at, at how we're acting in here. And it's pretty clean, guys. I mean, it's there, there's not really a lot to say. I wish we had a much better day today. Uh, I wish we didn't have the talk that we had, and I wish that things don't look like they're going to escalate, but they kind of do look like they're going to escalate. So do with that what you will. Now, if we look at something like this, this becomes abundantly clear that I think a test of this level is pretty realistic, this 15.5. I think that's very realistic for us to get up there, and you can see how we're, we're wedged in there. Drill this down out now into the hourly, and you can just see flag after flag after flag. Now, what I like about this too, and we went through this in the pre-market live, hopefully you you, you tuned into that. If not, they're public and you watch them at any time. But, you know, left shoulder, head, right shoulder is what we were discussing. And then what we were doing was just kind of talking about this as a neckline and what was happening. You have your the test right here, and then you have the rejection and the final flip right in here of that level. And I think that's important. So for me, I think you're kind of in, in limbo right now. We're between this 14.8, are we going to hold? Are we going to get flipped at 15.5? And now why we're in this limbo area at the same time, you drill into the daily, pop our levels back in, and you've just got a battlefield here, but you are over. You, the bulls are in charge. Maybe they're not after CPI, but they sure are right now. And you're here as well. I mean, it's a big week for data, but the data is secondary to what's going to happen with the economy. And the economy is going to be driven by what happens right now with war. If we get dragged into a war, which can happen to think that it can't happen is just not an accurate statement i do think we should talk a little bit more about the map. i know people love when i bring out the stool but i do want to go through a bunch of trades and things that you should be watching tomorrow there's a bunch of names out there that we should be paying attention to but if we look at the dollar again right to right to support now are we going to hold here or not hold here we just don't know yet you pop in your moving averages and we've already broken the 12 and staying below the 12 three times in a row, which we have not closed three times in a row below the 12 since we began this 11 week run. I always look for those little changes when we see them. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to collapse, but I'm sure everybody already saw this, but I'm just going to draw it in in case you haven't. That's a that's a, a neckline. You've broken that. If you want to see how significant that channel is, you can always clone them. Any service should have these clone buttons and you always want to clone your lines so you can see your channel. That's a pretty clear channel, don't you think? So we are out of that. You have three to five days to pop back in a channel for a channel to have any real chance of holding. Let's see what happens with it. But we are seeing weakness in the dollar. It is possible that this does come back into this channel. No matter how I look at this, when we get into the just nitty gritty of this, and we look at this cross, which we have discussed at nauseum, let me just clean off these lines. We, no matter how we look at this, we still have that golden cross. 
and it's sitting right there. And I pay attention to this. If you go and take a look at the market when you have these golden crosses versus death crosses, that's when the market moves. I'm a huge believer in RSI. I always say that you know gravity doesn't care if you believe in it either, but it exists. I feel the same way about RSI. Someone cracked a joke and I thought it was kind of funny. They said if RSI worked as well as gravity, everyone would believe in it. That's very accurate. It does not work as well, but uh, I think you would be remiss in not learning some of the basics. I'll show you a couple ways that we used it in a second here. If you like what I show you when I show when I show you this, let me know and I can put together a, a live stream of trading that we did. So you can see the, this actually in action. And then on top of that, I can turn it into an educational video. I have somebody that's helping me out with that. If there's enough of an interest in it, I'm more than happy to do it. So we can see where we're at. We can see where we're rolling. All right, let's get into the bomb market because I think that that's really where people are, that's where we have our heads right now. I keep saying we're going to five and a quarter. If you get a conflict as the conflict that you have right now, the number one thing that people are going to buy is what? They are going to buy bonds, okay? They are going to buy bonds. They are going to buy US treasuries. Nothing is stronger than a US treasury. Not your Bitcoin, not your bar of gold. You're gonna log around. You're going to buy treasury bonds. You might buy the short, you might buy the long. That's up to you. We can discuss that later, but you're gonna to wanna to start looking at the 10 year again. I'm still looking at a 30 every once in a while, but I'm back to looking at the 10 year again that's absolutely being bought. This is being bought really, really aggressively, guys. If you take a look at where you are on Friday and where you close today, you have a 5% change in yield. It's a big change. That's a big change. And that affects sectors that you're not paying attention to. And we're going to talk about one of them right now. Now, you look at the VIX. The VIX does not have a care in the world. There is not a care in the world in the VIX. And I find that fascinating. You should be moving. You should still see people buying some level of protection. And there's not a care. I, I know people are gonna tell me it's broken. It's not broken. It's just not doing what you want it to do. Therefore, you're assuming that it's broken. It's not. When it needs to spike up and when fear kicks in, we see fear. It wasn't broken back here in September, October. It definitely wasn't broken back here either. It's just not doing what we want it to do. So instead of saying there's something wrong with the indicator, let's just go on the assumption that there's something that, that we're missing here. And I think that that's how we have to look at it. Look at crude. Oh, they're gonna give me Colgate. Look at crude. And I appreciate the comments and the sharing. And I appreciate you telling me that, you know, just keep coming with the content. Don't worry about if it's raw, you'd rather just learn. Does this look like something that's going to explode to the upside? I keep waiting for this move. I'll show you the other move I keep waiting for. I can't remember the last time we had a conflict, any kind of conflict, and Lockheed Martin had one good day. I really can't remember ever seeing this. And this is a complete reversal bar. So you're gonna have to watch this low tomorrow. There's actually a short here. There's actually a short setup in defense names, which I did not think I'd be saying three days into this. Now, you always have gap risk. Take this with for what it is, an idea. But if you can get below that 432.50, just you might want to remember that. We're going to be covering these tomorrow when we're live pre-market, when we're covering PPI. For those that are new, every Monday through Friday around 8.30, sometimes a little earlier, we go live publicly. Just, be, you know, if you subscribe, you'll be notified. Anyway, I would watch that tomorrow. Does anyone think that we're getting enough of a move out of the defense sector over this? So what are we what are we missing? Why are we not watching? Like I'm looking at these tankers, which should be moving on this news. They're hardly moving. So I'm trying to put the pieces together, guys. You're, you're going to start here on the wheels turn as we start diving into this. And I'm having a real tough time. This piece of the puzzle I get, and this piece of the puzzle is pretty interesting. I think a lot of people do not understand why utilities are moving. I don't think that people get this. So as the bond market drops, utilities get more attractive. If you want to be defensive and you still want to get a yield, you're going to buy utilities. One of the names that we bought in the community already was this SO. I'm going to take the notes off, but we paid 64 for it. It's not over. I'm just going to say this now. This trade's not over, guys. Yeah, you're you're behind from where, where we're in, but this is far from over. If you just laid the most basic of indicators, you can see that you know you have 67 and a half before you really have any kind of resistance the way that I view the world. Now you could always argue these spots in here, but the neckline's not really till 68 anyway. And RSI is just getting started. I think we're just starting to see money rotate into these names. You can start looking at Duke Energy and look at these charts. I mean, they're beautiful. Look at these reversals that happened on Friday. They were just absolutely beautiful. And I think we're going to see that across the board in the space. And I'm going to tell you why. NEP was one that if you followed, have you been following? This was one that we shorted around $37. And we actually followed that day by day on these videos. So people could have actually traded along with us. But if you're looking at how this is acting, you had a negative, really negative report today. And you know, $20 target price, stock's up 7%. The underlying utility is up four and a half percent. 
So here's what happens, and this is one of the other sectors that we're gonna start looking at. I don't think we're there yet, but I think you should keep your eye on it. So we're talking about this in the room a little bit, not a lot, but I think you have to start looking at solar. Solar got a huge hit, and the reason for the hit was because of financing concerns. If the bond market starts to rally, you could start seeing people start picking through the bones of some of these solar names. There's a bunch I'm looking at. I may review some on uh, Saturday, this Saturday, but we just don't really have the time right now. This is where it gets really super interesting to me. So move, let's clean all this off. So move is the US bond market option volatility estimate index. Now that is a really fancy way of saying it's the VIX for bonds. If you just think about move, it is the VIX for bonds. Now what happened today? Well, they're buying insurance on bonds. Well, why the heck are you here buying insurance on bonds and, and panicking today? on bonds with a 7% move to the upside when the VIX is collapsing. So this is a discrepancy and it's one that we have to pay attention to. Now, if we drill into the high yield sector, which might give us a little clarity here, this is where it gets even more interesting because high yield was bought today. So they're buying high yield and at the same time they're buying high yield, they're buying protection, something's off. And so maybe we, we have to find out what's going on there. That might be something worth spending and exploring and spending a little more time on, but it's certainly something that we need to pay attention to now. As far as names and ideas, I would tell you to stick with the large cap guys and we'll review that. But there are other names out there that move today, massive, massive moves and things that people should be looking at. So for example, there's this ARKO. This was one that we actually shorted today, did well with. This was a pretty big blow up. I would just watch this tomorrow. If we start to roll, you might start seeing this come in again tomorrow. This was definitely something that I don't think we're done on the short side, just my opinion. If I get over the open, then I think you are, but this was just too easy. And I just think with PPI tomorrow at 8.30, people wanted to get out of there. And I think it's definitely something to pay attention to. Now, one of the systems that we use to get out of ideas, for example, crowd, and this is what I'm thinking of doing a video on, so just comment below when I say this. So one of the indicators that I use gave us a glaring indicator to, to trim. Now we bought this as a, here, let me show you this. We bought this as a, a, a swing trade, but where the market is right now, it concern me. So there's a way to use RSI to actually read when these things are peaking. And I think it makes sense for me to go over this, but this was actually something that we went over live in the room and we were able to get people out if they wanted to get out and they wanted to trim in here. Now this is another sector that was brought up today and when we were in the pre-market video and what I like about this more than anything, you keep breaking levels. It's not really caring what the market's doing. It's just continuing to grind higher and grind higher and break levels. And these names right now are hot. This whole sector, we were going through this pre-market live today, this whole sector is on fire. So it's not something I would sleep on. We're obviously in, I think about four or $5 cheaper, but this is still setting up to have a, a fairly nice move. It's something I would put on my radar and pay attention to. This Groupon, this is a massive, massive rejection of this support line right in here massive so we flipped it was support over higher high close i mean this is why you have to honor your stops flips higher high close cracks tries to get back over that's about as clear of a rejection and a reason why everybody must use stops i mean what's crazy is i don't know why this level is the way, is the way it is but it nonetheless it is so this is something i would be paying attention to you're seeing some other cracks out there and i'm going to spend some time on some names because i think that you can use some different names tomorrow for juxtaposition to how the market responds to whether or not it's ppi good meaning lower or ppi higher bad right if it's higher that's not going to be ideal because it means cpi will be higher because ppi is what corporations pay and we all know that the corporations pass it on to us so you watch netflix you always want to start towards fourth quarter you might want to remember this really quick tip save you a lot of money fourth quarter start marking year-to-date vwaps you start getting under your anchored vwap for year-to-date you have a higher degree of probability of tax selling going into december on those stocks Okay, so I would be well to tell people that you wanna make sure in November, December, you're not cracking here on Netflix or you're gonna see net sellers. And you're hanging in here. We have some people that are being uh, moved around in the company and that, while that juggling is going on, they're also pulling out of their ad free business in Kenya. I don't know that it's the Kenyan market that is the problem. I think it's the fact that this was supposed to be their quote, savior. This is what was supposed to add so much in revenue. And it just doesn't look like that's exactly what's happening. So this is definitely something that if we have a weak market 
topic tomorrow. This is probably one that I will pay very close attention to. The video is one that we traded exceptionally well recently and we're not doing anything with, but I do think that it's, well, we're holding it, but I don't think that it's really worth uh, telling you that there's something really special about what's going on here right now. You're hanging in there. Semis are holding in there. We're going to get to another semi that looks a lot better and a lot stronger in a minute here. But I would watch this, but you do look like you're starting to work this off and pay attention to it. I'd be more interested in watching Pepsi. Now, we heard a lot about Pepsi, and we see this huge breakdown right here. And that was the breakdown when no one, everyone that was going to take these weight loss drugs and no one was ever going to drink a Pepsi again or have a potato chip. And the CFO basically came out and said, yeah, that's just not what's happening. And this to me is muted because not they beat and the CFO crushed the conference call. I mean, absolutely crushed it. So I think it's definitely worth listening to that conference call if you're trying to figure it out. But I think that this is grossly overdone. And one of those low beta names, if you're looking for a low beta name that's in something that, that is consumer discretionary, I think they have this as a state. People. But something where consumers spend money, I would be focused on this. I think this is really very interesting and something to pay attention to. A couple other names that I think you should pay attention to tomorrow. Rivian's one that we're in in the mid-18s. Two upgrades today. The way that this works, and I walked through this a week ago, and you can comment below if you want me to get into this on Saturday. I can't right now for time's sake, but this is really interesting because we shorted this because of the convert. We bought it when the convert priced. The bottom line is the convert price is all the way up here. So no one is going to short here and then have to get back in up here. That's not how it works. So you would have negative equity. That's not a hedge. And this was priced in such a way that the, the people really want to have a large position in the stock. So it's very bullish the way that they were able to price this. They didn't have to price it as we've referred to it or how investment banks refer to it in the whole. They didn't have to come in and say, oh no, we're gonna, I want $14 stock. I want where it was in July. No, they're saying, no, no, you're gonna get, your stock's gonna be up here and you're gonna get a 4% coupon or a 5% coupon, which to me is absolutely insane to get the same kind of level of coupon that you're going to get in the treasury, but it is what it is. So they just want the kicker. But if you take a look at this, I think that this is definitely something to pay attention to. I thought you might've gotten more love out of it today, but maybe it's day one and light volume because of what's going on. SMCI was one that we bought recently as yesterday, paid 288 and then had a great day with it. I'm gonna spend a little time on this. This fits in the same exact category as we were watching this trade up and why this was trading up we're pulling money out of it. And the reason is one, because of where we are in the positioning of the market, two, the uncertainty of what's going on in the market, and three, this got really frothy and it was the same exact kind of trade. And I'll just show you some of the highlights. But if you think it'd be helpful, I can actually show these two trades live and, and what we did and how we pulled money out when we pulled it out. But from when we got in this, now, for time's sake, I'm just going to clip the room instead of showing the room. But you can just see right here, this is from yesterday. I like showing the timestamps when I say that we did things, especially if I'm going to walk through something so that you can actually see the timestamps, 288. So you can actually take that time, go look at the chart and go and learn something. You can go look at why that was the stop. And then I just put the alerts out and this kind of links to those alerts and then people get notified on their phone or desktop, whatever. This was just a trade that we had in NVIDIA calls. We were actually down in that I just talked about. Hey, if you want your break even now, get out. I held, but it doesn't matter. But here, so then you can see today, 10 o'clock, SM, SMCI up $23. Trim, move stop up, that's 10.02. 10.44, up 28, trim. So now we're up and we're moving the stop to break even. Now, why is this important and what are we seeing? First and foremost, the very first thing I did off the rip was this long bar to resistance. When I saw the spike up and I saw something here, and I don't have the time, but if there's an interest, let me know. And I'm, I'm more than happy to explain it. So once we did this, I scaled out of some. And then I just watched it keep going. And then we started seeing signs of weakness. And I'll show how to read this. But into the strength we were just pulling money out of. There's twofold reason why you're doing this. Number one, you don't want to be, and there was a, a little symbol up here, a little gravestone. But number one, you don't want to be the guy, and guy in the general sense, that's panic selling their stock down here and they're full position. You wanna be the guy that's selling half up here, and then when this pulls back, if you wanna add, if you see something that makes sense and you wanna to add to it, you can add back that secondary position, or you can leave it off and reduce your risk. Say, if something's going on in the world, like a war or PPI tomorrow, you pull money out and you lock that in, 
and it gives you greater flexibility with the position. You're not in a runaway bull market. I'll say my favorite line. You don't have $1.7 trillion behind you. So you are tr actually have to learn how to trade in a market like this. And you pull money out when this is going on. We don't have the Fed at our back anymore. But I can get into this trade and also show you this is the exact same process that I used for crowd to make sure that people in the community knew this is where my head is. This is where I am pulling money out. And then of course, everybody has to make their own decision. Do I think this is busted? No, I'm showing it for a reason. This is far from busted. This looks like a monster. This looks like an absolute monster that could gap fill. If we did not have the situation that we have now, if we were not in this predicament, I would probably stay in this. But you understand hopefully the process of this. And if you want the particulars, just comment and let me know below. If you take a look at Tesla, we have a position in this as well. I'm just gonna be real blunt here, guys. We're long tech. I mean, we'll see how it goes, but now we're up and, and someone uh, that was helping me with it, with all the alerts and just organizing them in the spreadsheet, we're up I think on every single one of them now because we bought and all you do now is just move your stops up and if you get stopped out you get stopped out it is what it is when I see this you need to pay attention to this this is this is exactly why I tell you and why I do these videos and why I try to explain things I try to equate the the, the the times that I did things where I didn't understand why things were happening and then allow you to hopefully learn so you don't have to make the same mistakes that I made but in 03 we thought the market was going to crack when we did operation Iraqi freedom or whatever the heck they called it and when we went there and we did that we thought the market was going to crack it did not crack I'm seeing very similar behavior to now that's all I'm going to say, where we just didn't understand why the market didn't crack. Now, I understand now, 20 years later, why it didn't crack. I'm going to do it on Saturday and get into it. But when I see something like this, where I have a multi-year DTL and I have this inverted head and shoulder sitting here, I hit it, I make a low. I hit it again and I make a lower low before I start rallying. You have a good CPI, PPI number. This looks like it's not going to escalate. And you can really see something like this break out and really finish strong to the end of the year. Remember, the one thing, if you take nothing from this, start looking at what stocks are above their anchored VWAP year to date. That's one thing you really want to take away from you. But to me, this looks like it could be an absolute monster trade going into fourth quarter. I am not talking about the fundamentals. I'm talking about technically looking at a chart and the behavior of that chart in this current environment. That's it.